In this tutorial, we will take a look at the features and functionality of an issue tracking list. Similar to a task list, the issue tracking list is useful for tracking a list of items where a user must take action and track their progress. Some good examples of using an issue tracking list would be for logging customer service issues or IT help desk support questions. In this example, we will take a look at the IT site and how the help desk is using an issues list to log and track help desk support issues. So I'll navigate to the IT site, and on the quick launch, you'll see a link to the issue tracking list. Click that to open the list. And in the list, the first column is an issue ID, and this is a number assigned by SharePoint, just a sequential number assigned to each issue that's created. The title of the issue, who it's assigned to, the status, priority, and a due date if one was entered. First, we'll take a look at one of these issues. I'm going to open this issue here, paper not feeding into printer. And you'll see a lot of the same fields you see with a task, as far as title, who it's assigned to, and status, and so forth. One field that is different is this comments field. Comments will track each comment with the date and time the comment was entered. The first entry in the comments field will be the name of the person who originally created the issue, even if they did not enter anything in the comments field. When the issue item is opened, the user can see the history of all previous comments, which are time stamped and listed in descending order. This issue has been assigned to me, and I've already made one attempt to fix the printer, as noted in the comments field. So let's say that it was decided to send the printer out for service. So I will add a second comment noting that. So to add the comment, I'll click on Edit Item. I'm provided with a new comments field and the previous comments display below that. So I'll click inside the comments box and enter my comment. So after entering the comment, I'll click Save. So now if I reopen this issue, you can see my comment has been added to the top. To add a new issue, click on Add New Item here at the bottom of the list, or click on the Items tab and click on New Item. So I'll fill in the form here, starting with the title, the printer not pulling paper in from the tray. And I'll assign this to Sandra Mills. And just as you saw in the task list video, an option can be enabled to automatically email the person or group who selected. For the status, I'll leave this at active and priority. I'm going to set this to high. No real need for any further description for this issue. And you can assign a category to the issues. This is a customizable list. These placeholder categories can be replaced with categories that fit the way you are using the list. For example, if using this for IT issues, you may want to use categories such as software, hardware, and phone. I will show you at the end of this video how to customize this category list. Related issues displays a list of previously logged issues to select from. A link will be created to any related issues you choose. This is beneficial to the support person troubleshooting the issue. They can click on the link to a related issue to see if and how it was resolved. So in our list, we do have a very similar issue with the paper not feeding in. So I'll select that issue and select Add to move it over to the box on the right. And then when finished, click Save. Now I've opened this issue back up. Notice down in the Related Issues field, this is a link to the other issue I selected that was related. When I click it, the other issue opens. As I mentioned, I'm going to show you how to customize the choices for the category field. So to do that, click on the List tab, and then choose List Settings. The Column section shows you all the fields of the issues list. So I'll click on the column name, Category. And in this box here is where you would replace the placeholder categories with the actual categories you'd like to use. They show only three categories, but you can enter many more if that's needed. So I've entered the categories I want, and I'll just scroll to the bottom, and she's OK to save. You'll notice the issue status and priority columns are also choice columns, so they could be customized as well. So the next time I go to create a new issue, down in the category field here, 
I'll be able to select from the three choices that I created.